Now I've got a question for you to open this video with. What is with influencers going for a quarter life crisis of where they've pretty much gotta let the entire world know that they are losing their mind? Sorry, not losing their mind. I'm evolving. I'm changing. I'm even growing. No, you're none of those things. You're probably bored because you've got way too much money and you probably don't have much of a friendship group because everybody on planet Earth considers you to be extremely irritating. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us back to Jojo Siwa. Yes, the individual that I just made a three hour video about. And if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend it because a lot of the things that I speak about in that video is incredibly important for today's video. But if you haven't, well, at the end of the day, it's fine. You can continue. You can watch this video. And honestly, if you have no plans to watch the video, fair enough. I mean, I look at my audience and the amount of content they consume from me and I, I get worried for them. Really worried. But now yes, you're probably thinking, geez, a three hour video and now you're making another one about the same topic? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's because there is so much to speak about. And in that video, I did briefly cover a topic about the Jojo Siwa rebrand phenomenon. And this is something ongoing right now, which is probably the most spoken about thing at the time of recording this video, which if you're watching this video in like a year's time, this is April 2024. Hello, if the world has ended by now, well, you're dead, sorry. But yes, right now, Jojo Siwa is being spoken about a lot because of her rebrand. Some people are saying that she's going into the WWE. Some people are saying that this is just an absolute cringe fest. But right now, Jojo is being spoken about more than she has ever been. I mean, Jojo has even gotten to the point of where she is claiming that she has created this new brand and genre of music that's going to pretty much change the world. I want to start a new genre of music. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well called gay pop. Jojo, you're a little bit late for that, mate. We've already got that, and we've already got that, and we've already got that. We don't need it when we've already got it. But of course, yes, this rebrand has been the center point of memes, jokes, and conversations. Right now, if you search Jojo Siwa on any platform, it will most likely come up with an absolute flood of tweets relating to this supposedly amazing rebrand that Jojo is currently going through. And the reason that I'm making this video isn't just to come on here and say it's very cringy and say all the other things that everybody else is saying. I'm coming on here to say that I think everybody right now is speaking about the wrong thing. To me personally, with this rebrand, as I said in the previous video, there is a much more sinister reasoning behind all of Jojo's recent actions. Jojo right now has a past that she is desperately trying to hide and the people that financially back her want to hide. They do not want people to find out or read about the things that Jojo has recently been exposed for. So in today's video, I want to not only explore this rebrand and go through other allegations currently facing Jojo involving her possibly stealing music and using it as her own, but I also want to go through the actual conversation that we need to have about Jojo Siwa, about how this rebrand isn't as innocent as a lot of people are seeing it as, and I genuinely believe that Jojo Siwa is extremely happy to see the social media reaction she's getting, but not for all the obvious reasons, but for much more sinister reasons. But before we get into any of that, I do just want to say that this video is sponsored by me. Yes, you heard that correctly. Today at iNever Studios, we're offering you a subscription, and if you click subscribe right now, you will get... Not much, to be honest with you. You might get a video every week or two, maybe even a month. But basically, if you subscribe, you'll help me out very much. Uh, there's no code. There's no website to click on. There is just a big button below. And if you want to, you know, get the bonus, you could like it and comment. Oh, this is desperate. This is sad. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just subscribe, please. Let's get into it. Now, yes, ladies and gentlemen, now we're done with the begging, it's time to actually get into the main topic of what I'm speaking about today. What Jojo is hiding from everybody. Well, this takes us back once again to the free hour video where we explored a large amount of heinous allegations that faced Jojo in February 2024. Allegations of overworking children on her television show, Siwa's Dance Revolution, to the point of where a disabled child called Leah, who featured on the show, started bleeding from her belly button due to the amount of work that she put into this show and claimed 
Kotor also made that the girls who featured on this show were so overworked that they got to a heat level of where they could not breathe and they needed to leave the dance room to catch their breath. Kids were allegedly not paid the correct amounts of money that they should have received from certain pieces of their contract and basically a lot of the stars were allegedly basically blackmailed into staying on the show because if they did leave they would face serious financial repercussions and just in general Jojo Siwa and her mother Jessalyn Siwa were exposed to a lot of extremely damning allegations about their actions in the child entertainment industry. And we're not going to go into any more details because that was what my whole video was about previously but yes this was a big story but weirdly enough not really the biggest of stories and there is a reason for that that we will get into later on but youtubers were definitely speaking about it a few media companies were speaking about it and some tweets and tiktoks were made about that until recently of where the conversation around this entire thing has just mysteriously ended i genuinely don't really see anyone at this point speaking about these allegations and people will argue that people have moved on from it but honestly i don't think that's a very valid answer i don't think that people would just randomly move on from this naturally and i do believe that there is a sinister thing that has happened behind the scenes of where a lot of tactful and manipulative things have happened to deliberately flush this story out because this is a massive allegation if anybody faced this sort of thing in the entertainment entertainment industry they would have their career ruined yet jojo right now as we have seen is more popular than ever and that is extremely confusing to me yet at the same time there is a very obvious answer to it this entire rebrand is a deliberate tactic in my opinion to flush out the story and make sure no new eyes see it and you might think I'm crazy, but when you Google Jojo Siwa's name, there's no mention of these allegations. There's no mention of the possibility that she's trying to hide this story or she hasn't responded to the story and she's completely ignoring it. Jojo Siwa right now in the media is being basically discussed for all the good reasons. And what makes it even weirder is usually when somebody does something bad, even in future references to when they get popular again, it may be referenced. The thing that they did that was bad might get slightly referenced in those articles about the new thing that they have done. But I've gone through basically every article involving Jojo Siwa, and when you search the word allegation or something on those lines, these things that only came out two months ago at the time of recording this video there's no mention of these things whatsoever the story basically in the view of the current day does not exist and as i said i think that's incredibly deliberate i don't think that certain things in this story is a coincidence and you may be thinking where's the proof well, my friends, the proof actually lies on Jojo Siwa's TikTok. Now, I briefly went through this in my previous video, so I apologize if you have already seen this bit. But basically, Jojo Siwa has documented her rebrand from the very beginning to the current day. And in my opinion, this is very very suspicious and we're gonna get into it all right now and i should just say this will be more of a detailed deep dive than my previous video in the chapter that we spoke about this in so yes let's get into it So yes, my friends, let's get into how Jojo Siwa managed to escape the most serious allegations and biggest controversy that she has faced since Asbestos was found in her merchandise. And yes, that is a real story. <laughs> That, that actually happened. But ladies and gentlemen, this all begins on the 29th of February, 2024, only a couple of weeks after the bombshell article about her show dropped, Jojo posted this. <laughs> Now, my friends, when this was posted, it did confuse a large amount of people out there. JoJo's fans saw this and thought, what was going on here? Because as you can see, it says, me not knowing what to expect from the biggest meeting of my life. And JoJo in this towards the ending seems extremely happy. And naturally, this brought in a lot of questions. What was being discussed in this meeting? Was it how she was going to respond to all of the things coming out about her? Was it some new business deal? Was JoJo going to change? change up and do something different what really happened in the biggest meeting of jojo's career which coincidentally 
only came two weeks after she faced the biggest controversy of her career. And then skipping a bit forward, on the 3rd of March, it gets even weirder when JoJo posted, it was a matter of time, and then photos that spout out, see you in one month, remember, karma is a and yes, obviously this is the beginning of the rebrand. A lot of people at the first point of seeing this were like, wow, this is a little bit different. But at the same time, it was very cringy, of course. Like, nobody can deny this is one of the most cringiest rebrands I think we've ever had to witness when it comes to an influencer. And influencers do love to rebrand every now and again. They'll switch up and just basically become the complete opposite of what we knew them to be. And obviously, it's a very cringy thing to witness. But I think when it comes to child stars, this is an extreme common thing because they have been in this industry which is so terrible for so long and has forced them to act in certain ways for so long so I can kind of understand it but here obviously this is very very coincidental that this all came only a few weeks after serious allegations which Jojo is yet to respond to but it only continues because Jojo also started to I guess like change up not only her look but seemingly her her personality as well in tiktoks like this which i'm now about to play people were just kind of like who is this person this is not the same individual that i've known for a very long time i got a question if you could have one heaven phone call this is a random heaven phone call okay nothing nothing too serious if it was serious i'd call grandma grandpa uncle i never got to meet someone like that unserious heaven phone call who are you calling personally I'm calling the people in the Titanic submarine. The situation, the submersible, that whole thing. I'm calling them. Can you imagine you die in the way that those people died? And then, you, you know, you get to heaven, you say, All right, God, how, how you doing, mate? Cheers, thanks for letting us in. You don't know how you've died because, you know, it was like that. It was, it was quicker than that. It was instant. It, no, no idea what's going on. You were... 5,000 feet under the water, and then suddenly you see the party gates, and then you get into heaven, you're allowed in, and then suddenly... You get a phone call, and it, it's not, it's not your, 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 your granddad, your great granddad, your great uncle. It's Jojo Siwa. You have just gone through a horrific thing, <laughs> and this is who is called. I mean, honestly, I'd say to God, mate, just send me down. I, I don't want to be here. My friend said she would call Jopany Ramsey. I feel like that's a pretty good one. Who, who are you calling? What are we, what are we asking? Give me, give me, give me your take on this. I mean, I'm sure the people that you called would ask you the question of what do you think about the allegations currently facing you about child stars on your show bleeding from their belly button, being basically made to work ridiculous hours, and also getting to the point of where they could not breathe. And I think that would be a perfectly valid question, and I think the people on that Titanic submersible would be very interested to receive an answer. But yes, obviously Jojo does look very different here to her usual branding. She's, like, got tattoos, she hasn't got the bow on anymore, and a lot of people were seeing this and asking the question, of basically who is this some people at first thought this was jake paul ken some even thought it was joe exotic and it was very clear that a rebrand was definitely happening and the rebrand was basically confirmed on the 10th of march 2024 when jojo posted me because it was officially my last day being a child star and it's attached a very happy video of her dancing around and my friends this is pretty much where a lot of the articles start to be written a lot of the conversations conversations started to come in of where people were naturally a little bit confused about what was going on here and honestly I can't really blame people for speaking about Jojo Siwa. At the beginning of this video I did say that I think the conversation surrounding her right now is the wrong conversation to be having yet at the same time I can absolutely understand why. Jojo right now is having a lot of cringy interviews, she's posting a lot of cringy things and naturally that is going to get a lot of attention because not everybody is involved in the social media space as much as I am and as much as you possibly are and they do not know every single detail right now with the things that i've shown you you're just seeing a teen star go into their cringy adult phase where they've been basically squashed down their whole life and now they can finally rebel but obviously we know it's not that it's not another Miley Cyrus story or something on those lines. There is something more sinister going on here. And that only continues with Jojo deciding to post a warning for her audience. It's a shame she couldn't post a warning to those child stars that she took advantage of. Warning, the following content is not made for children and may be disturbing or offensive to some viewers. May contain sexual themes, violence, 
strong language, dramatic scenarios, and flashing lights. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, obviously, from Jojo Siwa, this is an incredibly weird thing to be posting. Yet, at the same time, it's really, like, the most millennial thing that I think I've ever seen. Because it's obvious, we all know what this was going to lead to, and I'm not going to say it yet. But, obviously, this is a type of promotion for her rebranding and what was going to come around a month later. And it's really weird, because Jojo Siwa is a Gen Z child, but she just very much emits Shane Dawson energy. Do you, you kind of get what I mean? Whenever I go through her TikTok and look at the progression of this rebranding, I can only see her going from, like, this... Jojo Siwa child star thing to basically the woman version of Shane Dawson. Like, like I, as much as that may sound a little bit ridiculous, just based on her wording, how she speaks and acts, it's just incredibly cringy. And obviously, this got even more people speaking. And I think that this is all, again, incredibly deliberate. Jojo Siwa and her manager, Jessalyn Siwa, of course know how showbiz works. They know how to get people talking. And a big phrase used is obviously, bad press is good press, especially in this situation. Because with these people being marketing geniuses, it's going to absolutely get everybody talking, which means that all of the things from the last month of all of the allegations were going to be drowned out. Everything that we went through in my last video when you search her name basically does not come up unless you search through pages and pages and the average person is going to do that. This is obviously an extremely despicable and manipulative tactic and again this is just my opinion but obviously it's a very very smart tactic. And the tactic only continues when Jojo posted saying that we don't know what's coming and only she knows and then on the 12th of March she posted basically she should have known better. And this obviously led to more and more and more people speaking about this thing. You can go through the comment sections on her TikToks and see that there were so many people talking. These TikToks were getting millions upon millions upon millions of views. And if you wanted to ask Jojo about what was going on, well, I'm sorry to say, Jojo can't take the phone right now. I'm sorry. The old Jojo can't come to the phone right now. Why? That bitch is in dreamland. <gasps> She swore! No, Jojo! Jojo, don't do it! No! What? I d didn't even realize my voice could go that high pitched. I need to think about a few things. Sorry about that. But yes, clearly Jojo has, uh, she's now become an edgy adult. She, she's not picking up the phone. The old Jojo, we don't, we don't want to speak to her anymore. She's gone. She's in the mud. Welcome to the new world of Jojo... Siwa. She's still called the same thing, same brand and everything. It's just, she now says nasty curse words. And obviously, yes, this is a big part of the marketing ploy behind her. She is becoming an adult. She's changing. And obviously, the thing that I've been missing out here is all of this, as while it has been a big part of, like, hiding pieces of the very serious story about her, but it's also been about promoting her music. Yes, just like every other influencer out there, she is desperately trying to start a music career because she is no longer satisfied with the content that she makes. Pretty much every single influencer goes down this pathway, whether it works out really well or whether it works terribly. Either way, a YouTuber is destined at one point in their career to pick up an acoustic guitar and think to themselves, oh, maybe I can be a part of the next Beatles. I'm sorry to break your dreams, mate, but no. No, you can't. Just put that, put, put that sh down, buddy. Put that down, pick up the Canon 80D, and get back to work. But yes, Jojo was certainly going through this phase of influencerhood, and yes, all of it was to do with promoting her music and stuff like that, but her music does intertwine with the things that we're speaking about in my theory of her trying to drown out the serious allegations. Because what her infamous song has been about, which we will go more into detail about, is her transitioning away from being this child star to becoming this adult star. Once again, Jojo is desperately trying to make it seem that she is now becoming an adult, which would be fine if Jojo Siwa was not 20 years old. And now this is this really weird thing that Jojo is trying to do at this point of where she's basically trying to act like she's turning 18, but that happened 
two years ago, yet Jojo keeps on saying, even in videos, of I'm now an adult. A new era of life, we're becoming an adult! <laughs> Now, at the time of recording that video, Jojo's birthday wasn't a day after that, it wasn't a week after that, it wasn't a month after that, it was over two months after that. So why is she saying that it's now her time to become an adult? I I don't really understand, well, no, I, I do understand what's going on here. The reason that Jojo is doing this and saying these things and trying to implement the idea that she is becoming an adult, well, there's, there's two reasons for this. Reason number one is what we've been speaking about throughout this entire video of Jojo is deliberately rebranding in an extremely cringe manner in order to deliberately create conversations, memes, and articles to drown out these serious allegations when searching her name. This is a tactic which has happened with a lot of famous people. There is a thing which a lot of media companies are guilty of, of where somebody will do something bad and then randomly a week later that same individual that did something bad will be in the media for a completely different story. Usually for something cringe. Usually for something that will get people talking because by that happening, the media stories from previous times of where they were accused of doing serious things will be completely and utterly drowned out. This sounds like a crazy theory, but it has happened quite a lot. And number two is Jojo is acting like she's now becoming an adult, so in my opinion, she can use the defense of she was just a helpless kid who didn't know any better when it came to the previous allegations. But also, as I said earlier, I do think that Jojo was inevitably going to rebrand and change up her content because obviously she couldn't stay a child star forever. In fact, the whole show which she's facing controversy for right now, Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution, I think that this entire show was basically created to continue the brand that Jojo has had for the last 10 years just with some other kid, just so Jessalyn and Jojo can continue to profit off that type of brand, whilst then Jojo goes off into the sunset with her millions, exploiting children by basically paying them nothing and being happy with her mother and continuing whatever path she wants to go down with music. Yes, I think that would have happened eventually, but I do think it's an extreme coincidence that this all seemingly happened only slightly after the real allegations were made. And I understand a few people will say, well, this story happened months ago, do you really expect people to continuously talk about it with nothing new coming out? And I would get that if nothing new had come out, but the fact of the matter is, is Leah, the victim in the situation in the video that I previously made, has been speaking regularly on live streams about all the things that happened on that show, and also even receipts for the contracts of that show have been posted by the mother. There is plenty of things to be spoken about, yet I see no media articles about these things. The only articles that were actually made happened at the very beginning of these allegations. Now you would struggle to find anything about any of this. So yes, is it really a coincidence that all of this came only two weeks after all of the allegations were made and continued to build? I really don't think so. Right now in the world, there is a really big conversation happening about horrific things that happened in the childhood entertainment industry in Hollywood and how these things are brushed under the carpet for years and forgotten about and how things are written to make people look good and, and to hide the true nature behind them. And I think that this is another example of it. I really don't understand how these competitive shows which are headlined by children somehow are just avoided and overlooked and just seen as almost just, yeah, that's just a part of the industry, cringy content of where kids are crying and basically mentally berated on set all day. People see this stuff and think it's normal and I don't understand why. To me personally, it's not really much different from all of the conversations happening right now about Hollywood. Hollywood. But sadly, the more populous thing to speak about is the memes, is the cringe, is the jokes being made about Jojo Siwa right now, because as I said, the average dude doesn't have the time to watch a 43 hour min minute video speaking about serious allegations. Most people open their phones and they just want to see a meme and they want to move on with their day, and I completely understand that, but right now, all I see in terms of the media, the people who have the responsibility to actually speak about these things, is then just speaking about Jojo's rebrand and how positive it is. And even if they're speaking about it in a negative way, they're yet to actually mention any of the allegations.
allegations and I think that still only benefits Jojo because it's drowning out the real story. And the thing is, is this rebrand isn't just working. No, 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 no. It is absolutely going viral. This is genuinely, as I said earlier, but this is the most I've ever seen Jojo Siwa ever be spoken about. Like, look at this chart, for example. As you can see, the interest for Jojo Siwa over the last 12 months was really nowhere until February and March of 2024 of where the allegations came out, and then suddenly out of nowhere, there was an absolutely massive spike to show that people are, are no longer speaking about the original allegations, they're now speaking about the funny stuff, the memes that everyone is speaking about. Jojo Siwa's rebrand has not only completely saved her career it's absolutely put her on the forefront of everything she's everywhere right now i can't go on twitter or tiktok without seeing a meme or joke about jojo she is absolutely everywhere i mean look at this tiktok of her crying yes it's seen as cringy and it was posted with the caption the mirror has no sympathy but that has 36 million views that is absolutely insane i don't think jojo siwa has ever had a tiktok with 36 million views and honestly this is just so clear that jojo to me is an extremely good marketing genius she knows what is going to get people talking whether it's her crying in her car or whether it's this i don't need to see this but she did post it on a tiktok and it did get a lot of views and once again more and more people speaking because obviously something was being teased out of all of the cringe there was something being birthed and of course that was jojo siwa's adult music career because yes jojo has dabbled in music before but that was before the grand transformation of where jojo siwa had her birthday and became an adult two months before her birthday but you know she says happy birthday to herself so surely it's her birthday and now she's an adult two years after becoming an adult but what makes that even weirder is that i actually was thinking what was jojo like going crazy before like 2024 was she still acting wacky with all the bows and the fast speaking and the craziness and i actually found out that no that is absolutely not the case i only went a few months back on jojo's tiktok and i found a clip of her where she seemed far far more mature than she seems in any of this rebrands who's your favorite ex lol what a question i bet you want to know who my favorite of my exes is i mean it's not that hard to figure out i do have a favorite <laughs> now my friends that was of course only a short clip of jojo but obviously in that clip she seems to be much more mature she seems to be a 20 year old speaking like a 20 year old whereas when i see her rebrand all i see is like an edgy teen in their rebellious phase trying to uh, rebel against their parents but obviously we know it is not a natural thing jojo is just deliberately trying to be as cringe as possible jojo siwa has been an adult for two years and in that clip that i just showed you it is very clear this person hasn't gone through some big evolution instead they're just just manipulating the masses into consuming everything that they do but also flushing away the story and that does get into finally jojo siwa's music which has gone down absolutely amazingly so yes let's finally get into it So yes, my friends, congratulations, you've made it to the absolute worst part of this video, because we're going to be going through some dark and horrific things in this part, and uh, I'm truly, truly sorry about this, but yes, Jojo Siwa's music revolution. This was the big talking point. This was the PA resistance of Jojo Siwa's rebranding. This was the thing that most likely you and everybody else has seen involving Jojo. Not the allegations, but this. Karma, which was released on April the 5th, 2024, and has gotten a rather interesting reception of 750,000 dislikes. And now, my friends, whilst I, you know, can't play this song for copyright reasons, I, you know, I need to pay my bills and stuff like that, I'm sorry if it's gonna make you mad, but I, I can give my review of this song, and, you know, I'm not claiming to be the next Anthony Fantano, but this song is definitely a song. It's a song. 
that exists. Now what's interesting is Jojo for her rebrand has been saying what's happening in her future is not for kids. Warning, viewer discretion is advised. If you watch this, get ready for some punk rock. Get ready for some cool kids doing some cool things where we say some cool swear words. We're different, we're edgy, we're not a part of the system, man. That's why I'm backed by multi-million dollar companies, even billion dollar companies in some cases, because they were the people that hosted my streaming show, which involved a lot of children getting exploited. It's really punk rock, Jojo. And uh, I think you're awesome. But I know you are basically a millennial, so we should just say awesome source. But yeah, when it comes to this song, Karma, I would say that this definitely isn't for kids. And I'd also say it isn't for teenagers, adults, the elderly, anybody really. Because honestly, nobody should have to suffer the punishment of listening to this absolute... This is one of the most atrocious songs that I've ever had the... Displeasure of having to listen to. I cannot believe that anybody has sat through this entire thing. What is wrong with anybody that has listened to this song more than once? But then going back to the serious aspect of the conversation of today, this song has been amazing for JoJo. It has absolutely helped wash away every little sprinkle of the allegations surrounding her. Nobody wants to speak about it. Well, nobody does not not want to speak about it, but nobody really knows about it because the media are no longer speaking about it. No, no, no. The media need to speak about this amazing song and nothing else. Else. We don't need to speak about all of the kids affected by JoJo's horrible treatment and the lack of financial compensation. We don't need to speak about any of that stuff. We're the moralistic media. We love everybody. And by the way, I should just say I don't hate journalists. I actually think journalists are some of the most integral people to society. But I don't like journalists that have no integrity whatsoever. Journalists that aren't willing to actually confront, you know, the truth and expose the real things like this in this story. People obviously have gotten their interviews. They've gotten their clicks and they're happy with that. And I think that's incredibly disingenuous. But, you know, people are going to get paid and people aren't really going to care about anything other than what goes into their bank accounts. And right now, when you search JoJo see what allegations over the last month on Google, all you actually get is one result, surrounding by other things of absolutely nothing to do with the story. And that's just absolutely wild to me. But what makes it even more wild is Jojo actually couldn't escape controversy. And I mean serious controversy, even with this rebrand. As much as the whole thing has been about memes, cringe, and laughing at Jojo, she actually was accused of stealing other people's music. This is something which a lot of people are speaking about right now. So even in the rebrand, things are severely backfiring for Jojo. And we will go through absolutely all of this soon, but I do think it's incredibly important for us to actually take a look into Jojo's music and really understand what it means. Because Jojo, she's no longer a child. No, 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 no. She is now a official 20-year-old adult and we are going to get into her music. We're going to dissect the lyrics and go through all of it. And look, I understand if you don't want somebody to read these lyrics to you for the next five minutes, I can get it. Here's a timestamp to where you can skip after that. Because honestly, no human being should have to be subjected to this. But seemingly, 15 million people were, and I truly am worried for the human race. But starting off, we begin with the lovely lyric of, I was a bad girl. I did some bad things. We know. I swear I did it all for fun, and it meant nothing. No, you did it for money. Don't, don't lie to us, Jojo. Don't you lie to me, mate. I know the truth. It never happened. It was a secret. Like when a tree falls in the forest, no one hears it. Another late night, another crazy mood, and I didn't think twice what it would do to you. I mean, you didn't need to say that twice, mate. We know that you definitely did not think about absolutely anybody other than yourself. I was a wild child. You always knew it. It was a matter of time before I... You were a wild child. What I mean... It's not really the same as, like, the 14-year-olds in Britain that are, like, getting drunk off two-litre bottles of cider that they bought from Asda for two pounds. It's, it's not really the same, but if this is the American version of being a wild child, fair enough, I guess. Then we get into this god-awful pre-chorus of Thou shall not lie. Thou shall not cheat. Thou shall not get caught up or you'll end up just like me. Oh, oh no. The, the, the horror of becoming a multi-millionaire who lives in a million dollar mansion. Oh no, don't, don't, no God, don't make me a millionaire. Don't do it. Yeah, uh, I want to throw up in my mouth. Well, I, I don't know where I should throw up from, but moving on. Then the chorus says, Karma's a B-I-T-C-H. We're not swearing because we're not in the adult phase yet. 
I should have known better. If I had a wish, I would have never effed a... <laughs> she... So she's still not allowed to say the F word. Fair enough. Don't say that slur. I just realized that there is a slur, which is the F word. And now that sounds incredibly inappropriate. Let's Karma's a bitch and she's with you right now. She is a good girl. I think she's boring. Believe me, 20 minutes later, you'll be snoring. Roasted. You've just got owned by the Siwa. But it still kills me <laughs> that you fucked up with. Sorry, I, I just can't. I, I, I just can't imagine Jojo Siwa like having like an actual human feeling. Uh, but it still kills me that you fucked up with her. And now the universe is giving me what I deserve. What? Serious allegations about your actions? Maybe. I mean, it is. Not to the serious extent that it should be, but it is giving some, I guess, repercussions. Uh, she speaks about some pop show near London. Please stay out of my city. Uh, gets tickets as low as $21. Well, oh, wait. <laughs> I just realized. I've copied and pasted it. <laughs> it's just giving me adverts. That's not a lyric. Oh, I feel like a silly billy right now. Let's continue. Go back to the chorus. You've seen the chorus. Basically, it just repeats itself. And then it gets to the bridge. And when I lay down to sleep, it's not your body next to me. The lonely room feels so empty. Just me and my regrets. Now, this is definitely me when I kick the dog out from the edge of my bed. Because it is really uncomfortable when it tries to sleep. You know when it tries to sleep between your legs? Uncomfy. I don't want it. And I can relate, Jojo. But then the next bit is all sad and disappointing and depressing. And then the chorus repeats and then the chorus repeats again and then again and again and all we can take is karma is apparently not a very very nice thing and this song ladies and gentlemen is god god awful and please if you have a younger niece or nephew that has put this song in their spotify playlist all i can really recommend you do is take their phone and never give it back to them because you do not need an ipad nephew or niece make sure you look after your niece or nephew by not exposing them to jojo siwa's music gonna give it a score of a 1.5 out of 10 you know never would ever read it again never would listen to it again and honestly i've actually not listened to the song fully uh that was just my rendition of it and i'm never going to listen to the entire song fully because i actually have some respect for myself well i don't but i i, I like to believe sometimes that i do and yes this song was a big thing a lot of people were speaking about it how cringy it was and again i do think that this definitely was a deliberate thing to contribute to everything that we've spoken about today but then as i said the controversy does not end there because this song sadly wasn't a singular thing no 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 jojo siwa is coming out with an album <laughs> Oh my god. Somebody needs to stop influencers making music. This is getting... This is a sick, sick little joke and it needs to stop immediately. We need to cease all actions when it comes to influencers picking up an instrument. It will help save humanity. I genuinely believe that if influencers stop making music, climate change would stop. Everything would go good. The The sun would come out and we would be happy. They would start to, you know, the wars would end. Wars would end and we'd all be happy if that happened. But no, obviously, an album is coming. And with that, controversy, as I said, loomed. Because Jojo was accused of stealing her song from another artist. And this story is quite interesting to me. I've seen a lot of people speak about it. Yet at the same time, I don't necessarily think it has the sinister backstory that a lot of people are hoping for. Yet at the same time, it is quite embarrassing for Jojo when you look at the true story behind what was going on here. Now, basically, at a fan premiere thing, Jojo showed up and started to play a new song from her up and coming album. And the song was called Choose Your Fighter. And in the song, Jojo is speaking about her ex again and all of her bad experiences and how you know oh, it's, it's really sad and you know she she hates her and stuff like that really sad song apparently and a lot of people were speaking about this and the, even the lyrics got posted on the internet because pretty much people started to add up the snippets that jojo released and it led to these lyrics right here some of my exes are lovely some of my exes are vain some of them help me like heaven and yeah you can continue reading them right here i'm a bit scared of copyright claims to be honest with you i don't know how it works right now even covers sometimes get claimed and i know i have a beautiful angelic voice 
voice, so yes, I'm not going to risk it. But yeah, these were the lyrics to the song, some people were excited, and some people saw it as extremely cringe. And whilst I would argue some aspects of cringe should be considered a federal crime, obviously at this point of time it's not a crime. The real crime that was accused though is that in 2020 an artist called Emmeline released a song, or at least teased a song, called Choose Your Fighter. And obviously, that's the same name as the song that Jojo was releasing. But an interesting thing to take from this is that that song was not released in 2020. But of course, I hear what some of you are now saying. Well, you know, some songs have the same name. Jojo Siwa's own song, Karma, is a song to a lot of other things that music artists have used out there. So what is the issue? Well, I'm going to now play a TikTok of where the artist that wrote that song in 2020 sings the song and also puts the lyrics on screen. Now, I'm not going to play the, the actual sound because I don't want to get copyright claims but you can read the lyrics for yourself. Okay, now you've seen that, I now want to play that exact same clip again, but side by side, I want to put Jojo's lyrics next to it, and I want you to compare the lyrics to each other, because obviously, there are some extreme similarities. Okay, so obviously these songs are basically exactly the same. The only real difference being that Jojo's song, ironically, is more PG. Yes, despite all of her rebranding of being a kick-ass, edgy punk rocker, she's actually released a more PG version of a song from four years ago that was not released. So the question is, is did Jojo actually steal this song? Well, seemingly, no, that is not the case. And the artist, Emmeline, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, actually did post a response to all of these allegations saying that she didn't actually sign off on this song coming out with Jojo. And if her version gets love, she can still put it out after Jojo's. So the belief of what actually happened here is that yes, this is the song that Emmeline put out that Jojo is now using, but Jojo is attached to a lot of expensive and rich companies, and those companies most likely knew that Jojo was making music. Jojo came to them, told her that she told them that she wanted to make music in this big rebranding, and the companies were like, okay, we'll help you out. They bought this song from another person, a smaller artist, paid them money, and then that song was given to Jojo Siwa. The company owned the rights. Therefore, Emmeline did not need to know about Jojo signing off on it, and Jojo took the song and, funny enough, made it more PG. Because, yes, the lyrics were changed for something less explicit, and, of course, that is incredibly ironic, and I don't think this is some big sinister motive, but at the end of the day, it is incredibly hilarious and honestly quite embarrassing for Jojo, because she's been going in all of these interviews being like, oh, I, I'm, I'm being somewhat different, I'm reinventing the wheel, but the reality is, is she isn't doing that. She is just being extremely cringy. And it does just show to me that this entire thing is just a massive facade designed to keep on making millionaires richer to hide things that could absolutely taint the brand and just to use the work of much more smaller yet talented people in order to continue Jojo's legacy and make even more money. But ladies and gentlemen, in the last few days, things have only continuously gone and worse for Jojo. And as you can tell, I'm in a completely different outfit right now, and that's because I've had to run to my office and re-record some things, because at the time of recording my video, we were under the belief that the one song that Jojo had stolen, obviously we know she hasn't stolen it, but the accusation that she had stolen was the one that we just went through. Now, honestly, if that was the case, I would be like, okay, I can kind of get it. Maybe the song was presented to her, she thought it was catchy, and she wanted to use it as her own. I could understand 
understand that. But now Jojo has been accused of stealing another song, and that song being Karma. Yes, the song that we just went through and you watched me lose my mind reading the lyrics to. Now, obviously, the lyrics in this song, they're cringy. They're a little bit off. They do seem a little bit teen rebellion. Honestly, a little bit outdated. Something from the Miley Cyrus era. And this is where it all goes a little bit weird because Jojo has been accused of stealing this song from Miley Cyrus. Now, obviously, that's a little bit strange considering Miley Cyrus is a massive artist and if somebody was to directly steal from her and they be a massive influence themselves, that would be very, very, very weird. Well, this is when the research goes even deeper because the song that Jojo was accused of stealing was apparently a song that was not actually released by Miley Cyrus and actually that song wasn't even Miley Cyrus's song and this introduces to us Brit Smith, who in 2012 wrote a song called Karma's a Bitch. And this song, ladies and gentlemen, is, well, I'd say it's similar to JoJo's song, but it is basically word for word the exact same song. And I'm just going to go through some of the lyrics right now to truly exemplify this. So Brit Smith's song starts off with, I was a bad girl. I did some bad things. I swear I did it all for fun and it meant nothing. And now we move on to Jojo Siwa's song, which starts off with, I was a bad girl, I did some bad things, I swear I did it all for fun, and it meant nothing. Now, obviously, those two parts of the songs are identical. Not like any word has been changed whatsoever. No, no, no. They are the exact same opening line, but it only continues when in Brit Smith's version it says, it never happened. It was a secret like when a tree falls in the forest, no one hears it. And then you go and look at Jojo's version, which says, it never happened. It was a secret like when a tree falls in the forest, no one hears hears it. And what's more insane about this is in the previous song that we went through, at least a few words were changed, but some of the only words actually changed in this part of Jojo's song is, for example, right here it says, when I saw the pics of you and her. In the other version, it says, when I saw the pics of you with her. They are the slightest and most just obsolete changes you've ever seen, and yes, they are practically the exact same song. But what makes it even more interesting is, of course, I ripped into this song. I said this song is garbage. And honestly, that mainly comes from the fact that, yes, these lyrics are definitely cringy, but I have heard the first minute of the song. It is very cringy to listen to when you get it from JoJo's vocals. But the thing is, is when you actually go and listen to Brit Smith's version, because the actual unreleased song is available, it was leaked on the internet, that song, it's, it's really actually not not that bad. The vocals are pretty good. The song actually sounds not as bad as Jojo's. And I think that's absolutely hilarious to me. And as funny as Jojo's lack of musical talent is, I feel like there are some real key issues that we do need to highlight here. Because obviously in the music world, not every single artist writes their song. But if they do have songwriters, at least you know that they work with those writers. And the experiences being written down on the paper and then sung are most likely the experiences of the artist. But with what Jojo is singing in this song, we now know that it absolutely does not relate to anything to do with her. It was somebody else's experience, a far less known artist than Jojo, and she has just taken that, taken all the things that they've written down and used it for herself. Now, obviously, that's not exactly illegal or necessarily the most immoral thing on planet Earth, but I really do think that that kind of backs the fact that they were desperate to kickstart this music career, and I think that backs my point from earlier of all of this being a distraction from the bigger story surrounding Jojo a few months ago. I think in that massive meeting that we spoke about earlier, they knew that they had to get this rebranding done quicker and get out a song immediately. So I think what they did was take a song that they had in their books and they gave it to Jojo Siwa and they based it all around her rebrand. Do I think that Jojo was inevitably going to rebrand and there was planning before any of the stuff came out? Yes, 
I do, but I definitely think with Jojo clearly taking other artists' songs and only other artists' songs and using it as her own, she was very desperate to get this rebrand out quickly, and I don't think that's a coincidence. But I think another thing that we kind of need to touch on here, whilst it's not the biggest thing on planet Earth, Jojo's whole thing of these songs is that it's about her experiences with her exes. Now knowing that this isn't her actual experience with her ex just makes me think her entire thing, her entire profile of Jojo Siwa is fake. It's a facade. As much as I've said that before, I feel like this only fundamentally solidifies that. Jojo Siwa is not a real person. She is simply a brand desperate to make more and more money as the days go by, and this is another example of that. I mean, just think about this. These lyrics, they're not good. They're cringy, and yet she could not write them herself. She had to take somebody else's cringy lyrics that they poured their heart onto a script from 10 plus years ago and use that as hers because honestly i don't think she has much creative talent whatsoever you have to only look further than whatever this is to really realize that and yeah jojo siwa once again has just been proven to be absolutely unbelievably fake her entire rebrand is a distraction it's a facade and none of it is real and i think it only irritates me even more that the media are treating her in the way that they currently are like it's this crazy goofy thing that she's doing it's like the, the miley cyrus of the 2020s when the reality is is that is not the case jojo siwa is just simply trying to squash away everything out there about this. And with that, I think it's incredibly important that we now get into the conversation surrounding the media and Jojo Siwa, and also how the media have protected a lot of bad people for a long, long time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, throughout this video, I've been speaking about how the media have drowned out a lot of stories to do with Jojo Siwa by posting their articles where they've interviewed Jojo, where they've been showing their rebrand and being like, oh, look at Jojo doing this and oh, looking Jojo doing that. And of course, I, as I said, think that this is all very, very deliberate. In my last video, I spoke about how Jojo Siwa very much values connections and it explains why she's still friends with people like Abby Lee Miller, James Charles, Colleen Ballinger, Shane Dawson, despite all of the allegations surrounding these people. And that is, of course, because these individuals are very powerful, very rich, and have connections to a lot of powerful people. For example, James Charles is still being invited to a lot of major events and is still receiving a lot of major interviews with major media brands where they basically try to completely rebrand James Charles and make him out to sound like this great and wonderful person and I think that that is what is basically going on with this whole thing with Jojo Siwa. I think this whole thing has been this big process for Jojo. She deliberately started to build this rebrand and of course she then started to speak to media companies by her offering a conversation during all of this big media frenzy. We've seen how popular Jojo is on Google trends any journalist is going to eat up an interview and i think the catch would be don't mention anything negative just speak about the rebrand whether it's about cringe stuff whether it's about the music just speak about that stuff and flood the story out and that's why you're now seeing so many clips of jojo i'm sure you've seen this clip from her interview i'm sure you have seen certain headlines where jojo has said outrageous things about pop music and basically reinventing the wheel allow me to read a few quotes from a few media interviews such as no one has made as much of a dramatic change yet she said no one has made in my generation this extreme of a switch i am the first in this generation it is very scary but someone's got to do it now obviously this is an incredibly obnoxious thing to say but obviously it's going to get clicks and other articles wrote about that conversation and importantly people speaking about it and in regards to her music there was quotes about how jojo was excited to bring back this version of pop music in celebration of the release of her song karma and obviously that is going to get people talking people are gonna see that and get very angry angry at quotes such as how she is basically inventing a new genre of music which is basically gay music which is meant to be k-pop but 
but I guess a gay version of it. And obviously, all of this is complete and utter bait. Jojo Siwa is a media genius. She knows how to market herself. She knows how to get people speaking, as does her mother, Jessalyn Siwa, as we kind of exposed in my previous video. These two individuals are incredibly fame-hungry people, and they will do absolutely everything, whether it's the most cringy thing possible, as long as it continues their career and legacy and continues to make them money, they will do it. And I think when it comes to these media interviews, the media know that they're getting an interview which will get them clicks and Jojo knows that will continue her rebrand. It's like a favor for a favor. The same happened with James Charles. He got his interview and the interviewer got clicks leading to more money. Ultimately, all of this is about making more money. That's all it is. That's all these people care about. It is all about increasing their bank balance. But as I said, this sort of thing has happened throughout Hollywood for years now. Media articles, media companies protecting certain stars by putting out positive stories. There are plenty of people out there that have signed horrific petitions, for example, yet they still get treated like amazing people despite what they clearly stand for and despite what they have clearly done in the past. And it does really make you worry about the state of Hollywood and the things that we don't know what happens in that industry. And I think Jojo Siwa is another part of that machine. Jojo Siwa obviously is a victim of the cycle of the childhood entertainment industry in Hollywood, but sadly she has now become the person that creates victims in that cycle. And with the media, they will just bury more and more stuff under the carpet. And I should obviously say again, it's not all of the media, but it is a very, very big chunk of it. Because if the media dare actually mention certain negative things about Jojo, well, there is a good chance that that interviewer, that journalist will no longer have access to not just Jojo Siwa, but the massive roster of talent that Jojo Siwa may be attached to via certain companies. Because journalists don't just get interviews by messaging and texting Jojo. No, no, no. They will have to contact a company who will contact another company and if they dare do something wrong they could possibly be backlisted and that means they will make less money and possibly lose their job overall and of course that is something which I wouldn't wish on anybody so I can kind of get why these things happen. It doesn't make it right but obviously it's the cycle of the Hollywood industry and it explains how they get away with everything. But with that, we should move into the final chapter of this video, and that is the truth behind Jojo Siwa. So yes, my friends, welcome to pretty much the conclusion of this video, but also the point of where I really want to speak about the conversation surrounding Jojo Siwa right now. I think the problem is with everything that we've spoken about so far today does kind of falter on the fact that obviously not everyone has the time in a day to speak about Jojo, and I think it's important to spread the information that you know about Jojo. I've seen some Twitter threads going viral recently speaking about all of the allegations surrounding Jojo in February of 2024, but I think it's important that we shift the conversation away from this is cringe, this is weird, this is funny, to hey, there are some very, very serious things that have happened and I don't think it's getting enough airtime. And we should ask the question of why are journalists not speaking about these things? Why is it when you actually go and look up the allegations facing Jojo Siwa that you can only really find four major articles about this? Why is that? Why are so many people afraid to speak about this conversation? Is it a financial thing? Are they afraid of losing certain clients? We really do need to know because it's incredibly important that certain victims in this story get justice. Leah, I don't think, is going to get that justice because of how much this story is being brushed under the carpet and that does make me incredibly sad. And how you know that the media really don't care about the stuff that Jojo Siwa has done is by recently with her whole controversy of the whole gay pop thing of where Jojo claimed 
claims that she is making a genre of music called gay pop. Obviously, that caused a lot of controversy because a lot of people out there were saying, oh, this is stupid because this is obviously already a thing. Gay content creators already do exist. Gay musicians already exist. Of course, that's true. But obviously, Jojo was once again baiting for headlines. And TMZ actually recently interviewed Jojo about this. And she obviously backtracked and changed her opinion about it, but also was very kind of like angry about the backlash in her response, saying things like, I could basically say anything and people would get mad. And TMZ, they didn't question her about all of the allegations. They didn't even mention it. In fact, I just Googled it. And the only controversy that they've covered in 2024 with Jojo Siwa is the gay pop thing. And to me personally, that just backs everything that I'm speaking about right now. This is once again going to flush down the results and make people just focus on this. Once again, Jojo Siwa has responded to something controversial that has nothing to do with this controversy. The media aren't going to press her on it because they know if they do that, they will lose a potential client and even possibly other clients attached to Jojo Siwa. This is a horrible, horrible industry and it genuinely does make me sad to see the state of modern journalism. Behind all of this rebrand, behind all of the memes, the jokes, the songs, everything, there is a much more sinister story and I think it needs to be spoken about because right now Jojo is the most popular she's ever been and probably the most rich she's ever been. She's going to release an album and she's going to get richer. She's going to get more popular and it isn't coming from a case of I don't think she should just should be popular. This comes from a case of if Jojo doesn't face repercussions for her actions then those actions are only going to continue. She's going to get more shows where more people get exploited and more people receive trauma. As we went through my previous video, it's very clear that Jojo doesn't care about people's trauma. I mean, only recently she's been mocking people for not turning up to a show that gave them severe amounts of trauma. So to me personally, this is all going to repeat. If Jojo has another show like Dance Bums or God forbid a season two of Jojo Siwa's Dance Revolution, I really would not be surprised due to the lack of consequences that she is facing. So this is why I think it's important to speak about these things, to try and help break the cycle. Obviously, I'm just a YouTuber, you're just a viewer, and we can't do absolutely everything. But I think by changing the conversation, changing the dynamic of it, we can contribute something. It may sound extremely cringy, but I genuinely think we can, and I think it's important to do so. The truth behind Jojo Siwa is, is that yes, she is a victim, but now she is the one creating victims. <laughs> But yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the ending of the video. Thank you so much for coming along to this video. I understand that I've now basically done four and a half hours of content surrounding Jojo Siwa, so expect a much more different video to come next. But if you don't know much about this story, I highly recommend going and watching my video, which will be up next, going through absolutely everything in a much more serious manner, where we go through... Thank you so much for coming along to this video. Please let me know your thoughts down below. I absolutely want to know them. And also, please like this video and please subscribe if you can. And also, so yeah, uh, social media is in the description as well. Instagram, iNaba. But thank you so much for coming along and I will see you in the next video. Peace out, everybody. Have a cracking day. And um, yeah, please, please don't don't ever listen to Jojo Siwa's music. And if you catch one of your family members doing it, please just get rid of their phone. Bye. How do I look, yellow man?